tribes continue to migrate into cyberspace. Joseph Pine, a co-author of The Experience Economy, says that experiences are becoming the predominant economic offering. The next generation cinema experience have the potential to more fully engage all the five senses to connect us with real people in flesh and to provide experiences that are more immersive and more meaningful than those delivered through home or portable systems. Digital cinema technologies is undergoing a seismic change and is set to unleash the best cinema viewing experiences with the latest next generation projection and display technologies. The new display developments include the latest in RGB laser and phosphor projection technologies apart from the LED cinema screen technologies being offered. That buzz said it's time to take a sneak preview on what is creating all this hype in the cinema viewing technology domain. Now may I please invite on stage our honorable speakers, Dr. Don Shaw, Senior Director, Cinema Sales, Asia Pacific, Christy Digital. <laughs> Mr. Nico DeClerc, Strategic Marketing Manager, Barco. Mr. Yusuf S. Ghalabhaiwala, Director, Operations, Galilite Screens. Rick Steen Araha, Regional Head, Technical Services, GDC Technology. I request you all to kindly take your seats and may I please invite the moderator for this session, Sri Ram Sisla, Independent Cinema Consultant, to kindly make his way onto the stage. Over to you, Mr. Sisla. But before I leave, ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a huge round of applause. Good evening and welcome to all of you for today's session on the next generation cinema viewing experience. We are fortunate that we have got an eminent panel with us today who are people These gentlemen are experts in whatever they do, and it's a good fortune that we are going to be discussing uh, cinema viewing technology, its progress, and what we can look forward to in the future. And uh, at the end of the session, we would like to uh, throw open the session to the audience for any questions that they may have. And I'm sure the gentlemen on stage will be able to answer them to your satisfaction. Basically, when we talk of viewing experience, uh, generally when a person enters the cinema, he goes, occupies a seat. The viewing experience is what captures his imagination, draws him into the film, draws him into the frame. And that's how his involvement with the movie gets even better. I hope I'm not wrong in this, but I think the viewing experience is what is a primary experience for a uh, cinema patron when he enters the cinema. And we have seen uh, the development of cinema projection technology uh, undergo, I would say, phenomenal change. And this is what we would be discussing uh, over the next half an hour or so. But I have just one question to the panel. We have seen uh, projection technology evolve, definitely. But has it been as rapid as what audio technology evolved? Because we saw audio moving from mono to stereo to you know, digital to immersive today. Have we seen the same kind of growth in projection technology? Who would like to answer this? 
this better? <laughs> A bit. Thanks, Raj. Um, I hope the echo is going to be fine. Um, I'm Nico de Klerk, I'm from Barco, and before I introduce myself as I'm coming from the country from beer and chocolate, and I for completely forgot to mention which country. I'm from Belgium, that's where the, the Barco headquarters is, so uh, I needed to add that a little bit. Um, the statement of, of the progress of projection, I find, I find that projection has moved quicker than audio, that's, that's my personal view. Um, it has gone through digitization, it has seen different light sources coming in now with laser phosphor and with RGB laser. It has seen new resolutions coming in with 4K. It has seen advanced integration with servers, which allows things like high frame rates. It even has seen multi-screen formats. So uh, I respectively, <laughs> respectively uh, disagree with the statement. I think projection has moved quite a bit and will move, uh, just as any, let's say, visualization experience, because it's not just projection. It might be just a lot of other technologies as well. And if I can uh, just add a little bit to that, and I'm, I'm Don, I'm from Christie. We're uh, Barco's primary competitor. So as much as it pains me to say this, I, I agree fully with what, just, what Nico just said. You know, I think projection has advanced a lot in the last couple dec decades, especially with the transition from film to digital. Thank you, Don. Uh, with uh, the introduction of digital, technology. There are a lot of new terms which have come into being and uh, I'm sure a lot of exhibitors here would like to have some clarification on these terms like what is you know, high frame rate, what is HDR, because that's what uh, they're being exposed to by uh, both your companies as well as uh, you know, the distributors who work and talk to them. But I'm sure uh, exhibitors would like a little more information on these terms and if you could help in clarifying what this actually means and how is it going to benefit the exhibitor. Don? Sure, which, which term specifically did HDR you HDR and HFR. Okay, those are, those are pretty straightforward. So HDR, as, as you may have guessed, stands for high dynamic range and that's something that we're seeing uh, especially the consumer television industry is embracing that. Now, the thing about HDR, it, it's, it's easy to, to describe in a concept. I mean, high dynamic range means the bright things on the screen are really bright, and the dark things on the screen are really dark. The hard thing about that is showing both of those things at the same time and being able to see the details in the dark areas and the bright areas. So the problem with HDR, though, is the consumer world is, is sort of throwing this out there as the, the holy grail of, of, of image quality. But, but the issue is there's really no standards right now. So anyone can build a product and stamp HDR on it. And what, what that really means, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, in the cinema world, there's really no true definition of HDR. The, the, the major studios, the DCI specs, don't define what HDR is yet. Really, the only, the only true effort at HDR in cinema till now is with the, the Dolby Cinema Initiative. Um, I hope that clarifies HDR a little bit. HFR is a little more, more simple. Uh, cinema frame rate's traditionally been 24 frames per second. Uh, about five or six years ago, James Cameron, director of Titanic and Avatar, went on a, a bit of a crusade to, to champion higher frame rates. So HFR means high frame rate. So instead of presenting a movie or a film at 24 frames per second, he's been doing experiments with 48 frames per second, 60 frames per second. We saw Peter Jackson continue with some of his, his experiments with, with some of the recent Hobbit films. And what it does is it, it gives directors a, a, a toolkit, a way to change the way the images look on screen. Some people like it, some people don't like it. It's a controversial thing, but at the end of the day, I think it's going to improve the cinema experience. Thank you, Don. I hope uh, it's very lucid and it should have clarified this issue for a lot of exhibitors. Uh, we have now seen the development of laser as uh, it's, it's more or less becoming the de facto standard for premium cinemas. Uh, and we've seen laser having two components of laser phosphor and RGB laser. Would both of you please explain what RGB laser is, what is laser phosphor, what's the difference? 
How does it impact presentation quality? Okay, um, I'll throw it over to you guys whenever I can, guys. I don't want to hog the mic too much. Um, so maybe first from a barcode perspective, um, we are a cinema company first, so whatever technology makes sense for exhibition, uh, we will bring to markets. And uh, we saw the potential for laser pretty early on. We started our R&D eight, eight years ago already, which makes that today we've got a really big suite, both in the laser phosphor and RGB technologies. So very simply put, and, and my uh, colleague Dr. Shaw can uh, probably explain it in more detail, but very shortly put, laser phosphor uses a blue laser diode and then a phosphorus wheel to create the other colors. While RGB, as in the name, RGB, red, green, blue, uses the three direct lasers. Now both technologies have their merits, but what they definitely have in common is they both guarantee a constant performance. They don't move with the lamp, as is the case in Xenon. They both allow further dimming, which makes sure you can get the right brightness for 2D and 3D, which is more challenging with lights. And they both have the advantage of cost. You cut the lamps, you cut on electricity. Now what you need to know about both laser phosphor and RGB is you can make a really nice projector, a really poor projector. It's like, it's like diesel and, 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 and gasoline cars. You can really make really nice ones and really poor ones. Um, but RGB has the potential to be a Rolls Royce. There's a couple of things that RGB can do that laser phosphor can't. Uh, the first one being white color gamut, which is colors beyond the current spectrum, which is defined by Hollywood and DCI. Um, whether that is going to be a thing, that remains to be seen. Disney is definitely a fan of it, uh, but currently there's, there's no content. But it's definitely in terms of guaranteeing the future, there is more color options with RGB. Uh, secondly, it gets a lot brighter. Uh, the barcode projector goes up to 60,000 lumens, which is double what a, a Xenon projector can do. And thirdly, it can do uh, color separation 3D to also and to a high brightness. So that's what's, what RGB has on laser phosphor. Now, laser phosphor, as I said, that's a blue laser and, and a phosphorus wheel. Um, it's, a, it's a very mature technology. It's been used in markets beyond cinema. It's used in events. It's been used in corporate by many manufacturers, also by, also by Christie. Um, and in cinema, it's also starting to uh, get its credentials. I mean, we've got a portfolio. Some of our competitors have a, have a portfolio. We've seen the great award here from Inox with the Laserplex, also here in India. It's, uh, it's coming through. Worldwide, uh, I can only speak for barcode numbers, but we have uh, installed about 2,000 now, which is a, is a huge number. So it's really, it's really getting there. Um, and I know I'm speaking long, but I'll make a final point, I think. In the end, the options are gonna become broader and broader, and I think in the end, the audiences don't really care. I mean, laser has a, has a marketable, marketable name, especially in premium, but options will become more and more complex, and it's really about us assisting you what is the right technology for whatever uh, experience you want to deliver to your customer, because there's so many different segments, different price points and expectations, so I think in the end, it's about you defining what it needs to be, and for us defining what the right technology is going to be behind it. Yeah, and from uh, Christie's perspective, I, I don't have a lot to add to that, maybe on the, the image quality characteristics that, that uh, Mr. Declare discussed. Uh, you know, I think that RGB laser compared to laser phosphor a technology that's going to bring you a higher contrast image on screen. So higher contrast means that, that a, when a projector can do that with the right decoding schemes, that's a path to high dynamic range. Now I talked about high dynamic range being this elusive mystery at this point in time. But in the future when, when the studio is organized, when the standards come together, RGB laser is going to be that technology that takes us into the premium screens that are capable of, of high dynamic range. Thank you, Nico. Thank you, Don. Rexon, now I have a question for you because you are going to be bringing in the new generation LED from Samsung. So can you throw some light on what the LED can do and how is it that customers are going to benefit with LED? Some information on the LED screens. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Rexton from uh, GDC Technology. Okay, so uh, earlier this year at CinemaCon in March, we launched a concept from GDC called Jetreel LED Cinema. Okay, so this concept is a luxury branded cinema concept where the display technology is powered by Samsung 
and the playback technology or the playback solution is by GDC. Okay, so as the name suggests, an LED screen is a revolutionary new technology in projection, or rather I would say in presentation, uh, where you don't have a projector, but instead you have an LED screen, which consists of like about 96 panels. And uh, the LED screen is pretty technologically advanced in the sense that you have much brighter images, images with a nearly infinite contrast ratio, a wider color gamut. So all in all, a very different viewing experience, a very premium viewing experience uh, for the audience, taking this technology to a whole new level. Thank you, Rexney. Any of you like to add something to this? I'm hogging the mic. Um, yes, I would like to weigh in on LED. Um, it's very interesting and it gets uh, really a lot of attention now with, with Samsung, uh, as we call it, the 800 pound gorilla entering in the industry. So it's, um, I think uh, I can speak for myself and probably also for Mr. Shaw to say we're also LED companies and we've been looking at LED for a while. Um, LED has its merits, uh, it has very really good uh, image quality, it, it probably eliminates the, the need for a booth, but there's also still some practicals to solve. Um, the maintenance of it, especially over time, if you put a new tile in, how do you keep it uniform? The sound, how do we make sure if a car passes by, it does not go like this around the LED screen, and 3D. Um, but these things are solvable. Um, I think the main inhibitor, and that will have to remain to be seen, um, from our perspective is, is cost, simple as that. So, so uh, it, it could indeed be a nice, nice uh, technology, but by our view, you would re need to raise the price 10 to $15 on a 10 meter screen to make the business case. Or the, the LED technology would have to come down by a factor of five of 10 to work for main stream. So um, it's an interesting experiment and we're definitely going to see how the audience responds because indeed if those things hold true, then uh, like I said, I'm a cinema company, we're also going to see what, what is relevant. But um, I think in the near future, Yusuf, I don't think you have a, a major worry just yet. My uh, question is uh, with a progression towards PLF in many markets and people wanting larger and larger big image sizes. Do you think LED will at one point of time be able to meet that need because we're looking at enormous picture sizes you know, which are being planned by many people, by many chains. So do you think LED will get to that place? If not now, it might be, you know? Yes, definitely. Uh, right now, the solution that we have readily available is a 10 meter screen. Okay, so I think most of the multiplexes it would accommodate, that's about 34 feet. And then after that you have, so this is at a 4K resolution. And then after that you have a screen which is double that size, which is about 20 meters. So you can really go in for a premium large format kind of an experience. So it's available in the future. That's good news. <laughs> I don't know, it's good news for Yusuf, but uh, Yusuf as a leading screen manufacturer in India. How are you gearing up for all these latest new technologies uh, from the cinema projection side? Well, it's it's a it's a you know, currently it's a premium it's a premium product. Of course, it's very expensive, and uh, if the industry decides to shift using LED screens and uh, you know I mean OLED actually uh, and and you know having the 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 complete experience and if, if cinema owners decide that they want to start using OLED screens and or LED uh, we will have to look at the possibility of uh, manufacturing it if we want to remain in the business I mean we've always evolved we, we had cotton screens we shifted to plastic we had the we had silver screens now we have better silver screens and if the industry decides to move in that direction I think that that's the way to go if we want to remain in business that is current scenario with laser trying to gain attraction, uh, there are some specific technical issues uh, with laser and again screen. So do yes. you think you'll be able to offer some yes. solutions yes, to that? Yes, yes, definitely. We are, we are already, uh, we already have these silver screens which uh, have, uh, which have good polarization ratios and are uh, good enough to uh, distribute light more evenly. Uh, we are still working on, I mean it's, it's, now we there there's a uh, we have to work on two 
different uh, scenarios. I mean, there's one which is the OLED, and there is one which uh, we are working for the uh, laser, uh, the laser projectors, which the speckle. I mean, uh, to eliminate speckle on screen. So yes, we are. We are definitely. We we will have something up very soon. Thanks, Vishal. Uh, we're talking of speckle. Does it differ from RGB to laser phosphor? And would a choice of screen be critical in either of these two situations? If speckle is an interesting topic. It's something that uh, you really only see on a an RGB laser projector. Um, speckle from a blue laser is it, it's not really visible to the the human eye. So, so what, what I would say is it, it mostly comes from the red and the green colors. So it, when a, an image is produced from a blue laser, you won't see it as much. And what it looks like on screen is a, it's a noise pattern. And, and it's due to the coherent light hitting the, the screen and, and, and making little bounces. The photons bounce around on the screen. And, and essentially, they're additive to each other. And they, they produce this noise pattern. And it's, it's unique because if you move your head back and forth, it appears to move with you. Um, so right now, there's, there's three known ways to, to get rid of speckle on a screen. Um, you, know, you, can, you can employ something called wavelength diversity, so add more reds, more greens, more blues, mix up the phase of the, the light that's hitting the screen. But uh, two, two easier ways to do this. One is to, to vibrate the screen, and I've seen plenty of attempts at this. Screen vibration works really well. You just shake the screen very very lightly at about the, the same frequency as the, the cell phone vibration, um, which we're all very familiar with. And the other, the other way to get rid of speckle is through choice of screen material. And, you know, I think some innovations in screen technology are going to, they're going to come around in the next three to five years that are probably going to make speckle disappear altogether as an issue for the industry. Um, and I'll add on, uh, on the on the laser phosphor side, there's no such issue. So on laser phosphor, there is no matter the gain of the screen or whether it's white or silver. Uh, on RGB, I mean, we, we've installed 225 systems. So we've seen all sorts of combinations. So we have a little bit of experience on what are good combinations. Um, but you know, it's only, it's only certain exhibitors who are also sensitive to it. Um, a lot of other people think it's fine. It's the kind of thing if you kind of, you never saw it until somebody pointed it out to you. Uh, so for a lot of exhibitors, it does not an issue. But for the ones that it is, uh, we have some experience in, in the, the combinations to mitigate that. And, and also in our technology, we have these pack links. So um, I think from the RGB side and premium side, it's not, uh, not a major challenge. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Nico. Uh, one final question before we wind up the session for Don and Nico, because you are people who have traveled widely across the world, meeting various uh, customers spread across the world. What do you think uh, Indian exhibitors, if you have had experience in the Indian exhibition industry, uh, if not otherwise, what is it that exhibitors need to do to combat competition from various sources like you know, handheld devices, iPads, whatnot? to make the movie-going experience once again fun and, you know, immersive. I'll, I'll go first. I think the answer is pretty simple, is, is put a great product on screen. Make sure there's enough light on your screen. Make sure your projection equipment, your audio equipment's in tip-top shape, comfortable seats. These are all the, the things that I think the, the movie-going public wants to see. Um, maybe we have one key differentiator in cinema, and that's 3D. You know, if, if you're putting on a great 3D show, that's something that audiences can't see anywhere else on their mobile phone, even on their TV at home. So it's all about the experience. I agree completely. Um, I, think, I think we should look at cinema exhibition with a mindset that, that every content is available everywhere. It's not, of course. I mean, there are windows. Um, but I think in India it's quite particular because there's quite a bit of a challenge with piracy. So you're competing very early on with the content being available on other platforms. So we really have to be with a mindset of, okay, assume everybody can see the film anywhere. What's going to make them come to my cinema? 
And we see the same challenge all over the world, of course, right? It's just people's time that you want to spend. They want to spend it with you and not in an entertainment park or somewhere else. Um, what I see in other countries is, is increased segmentation. People go from, it's not just mainstream and premium. There's a lots of segments in between that we really try to cater for certain groups towards kids, towards teens, towards you know, special content, alternative content, towards uh, opera lovers, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of segmentation going on to cover that. Um, there's also just a general um, destination idea of, of people should come to the cinema even if they don't really want to see a cinema. I'm going to combine it with other things. I'm going to combine it with special places in my lobby that people want to hang out. Or I'm going to add a bowling alley. Or in the US, I'm going to add a liquor license so people come for a drink. And then, okay, then maybe also go to a film. That's the second way. Um, and the third and most important way is, I think, um, getting to know your customers. It sounds really silly and basic, but um, I think for a long time in the industry, it was kind of almost a given that people would come to your, to your cinema. Um, there was a lot of marketing going on from, from studios, and people know about the film, they come to see it, and I think those days are gone. You really need to know who's coming to your cinema, who's, what are they liking, and give them a premium service. So I think on these three fronts, there, there's a lot uh, that we can do to really make sure that people keep knowing and keep coming uh, for a fantastic premium experience, because there's nothing like it at the home. Thank you, all of you. Now, uh, if there are questions from the audience, uh, the panelists would be happy to answer. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I want to raise an issue about the projection systems. Now, originally, uh, about Two years ago, uh, we came out with the feasibility of laser projection. Now we talk about laser with PROSPER or whatever, PROSPER and all these things. Now you, we also talk about the introduction of LED screens and you say it costs more money. Now just as much as laser was talked about two years ago, now, how much time do you think the LED technology as, uh, I mean, how it will become a cost-effective technology because uh, we have to see the trends of investing into laser projection as at the moment and then if, as uh, you said, uh, there is an 800 pound a gorilla which has entered the market maybe is going to be mean trouble for you but I don't know <laughs> how it's going to change the market and how long it's going to change the market that's something we should uh, start thinking about now because I uh, saw the introduction of laser about two or three years ago at Hong Kong and uh, that was the time when laser was coming in now what do we do the next with the advent of LED, how exhibitors should get ready for the introduction of that technology. Thank you. So, so I've been going to industry events for, in, in this business for quite some time now and I, I think it goes back 10, 12 years now when there was folks out there saying the lasers are coming, the lasers are coming, everyone get ready. You know, it's just next year lasers are around the corner. So it's taken us 10, 12, 15 years even as an industry to get to the point where laser projectors are becoming a viable technology that makes good sense to your business. Um, in terms of LED, you know, Barco and Christie are both well diversified in terms of the display technologies that we offer. I, I think that, that both companies will be ready if and when LED becomes the, the, the mainstream display technology. But the big factor, the big issue really is about cost. And if you're asking me to pull out my crystal ball and look into the future, I think we'll still be having this discussion 10 years from now. And what I'll add on as well, um, the people introducing laser were companies who know the cinema industry and then bring it to market when it's viable. Uh, the objectives of Samsung to me are still not entirely clear. I'm not sure if that's, they do it. They probably have alternative motives of doing so. Um, yet to be revealed, 
But I think there's also a lot of value in just being that first and having the attention, and you do, do get the attention, but I agree. Um, I don't think they, they've made the same trade-off in terms of viability for the industry before bringing it to markets. Um, so I agree, I don't think, and also for Yusuf, I don't think the your screens are going to be replaced in a big way. Um, it might find its segment, its niche in premium, that is possible if, like I say, those premium ticket prices is something audiences are willing to pay, then they'll prove us wrong. Then if, if people are willing to pay $10, $15 more to see an LED, that's fine, and then that is fine, because you no know, LED is also already a very competitive market. So if you, if you ask the price erosion on LED, LED is a, as a non-cinema product already established in many markets for many years. There's already a lot of price erosion going on. So um, I think the comparison with laser is not really uh, a completely truthful one. Any other questions from the audience? Are there any other questions from the audience? So I think that's it then. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a, a be it. Just one more. Hello. Yeah, I am a single screen in Hyderabad. My question: I've been thinking about this uh, since quite some time. We have seen this uh, Bahubali movie uh, with a 360-degree kind of a view. If we have seen an interactive movie, if any of you guys have rec recollect, can recollect that. So, are we going to get a 360 degree kind of an experience into a cinema hall? Is that something we are going to see in the near future? Like a screen on the left, on the right, on the top and also front ahead. Is that something coming up? That's been a question. And how, and how, how are technologies getting up? Um, well, uh, yes, it is coming up, but it, it is a, also a product that Barco is bringing to market uh, in the Barco Escape. Um, and with a little bit of luck, that's also going to come available in India soon. Um, so yes, like the surround idea of having extra screens on the side and having content for it, that's indeed an existing idea, and it's also something with Barco Escape which we're bringing to market. Um, okay. So you got the right idea. <laughs> Have another 10 years now or 5 years for that to happen? It's, it's commercially available now. It's available right now. Yes, that, that's IMAX, available. right, actually? So that let's IMAX? talk after the show. It seems like you have some interest. <laughs> okay. That's it. Don't be shy for more questions, people. Do we have any other questions, please? Okay. Exhilarating and enlightening indeed. Thank you, gentlemen, for a power-packed discussion. Let's have a huge round of applause for them, please.